Hello, hello, everybody. We are continuing our adventure here in Mass Effect 1, in which we will probably be ending it. Last time, I forget it, the total of everything that we did yesterday, but it was a lot of story stuff. We went to the research planet, caused a lot of trouble there. Killed Benezia, freed Arachni Queen, and just uh, pieced everything together enough that we came back to the Citadel, and now we also have to go and become a rogue reaper to stop a rogue reaper from destroying the universe. Let's move along. At least we should be. Hopefully it didn't do the... Kind of weird that, like, it's just like, Oh, Novaria, and Pharos, and Vermeer, planets that we could go to. But we're going to Ilos. With our stealth systems, I'm still worried about the Captain Anderson. Because Captain Anderson had to punch out the ambassador. That's not good. And now that we've found the location of the relay, that's one thing that interests me. We got the location of the relay from the last one we did. Does that mean that Benezia might have appeared in other places? If we... Well, no, because she needed the Rachni Queen. Like, surely we will... Maybe it's like, oh, we won't, don't want to... Ah, that would be it. Well, we don't want you going to the Mu Relay because it's in a place, and if you go there, it could start war. It's just like, okay, fine. It's not that important right now, I guess. But at the same time, Benezia made it seem such an important thing that I feel like... I don't know, there's like a million different ways things go in this game, it feels like, but at the same time not because programming limitations, but either way, Ilos. In the golden age of the Protheans, Ilos was a verdant world, dotted with the spires and arches of magnificent cities. Even casual observation shows this is no longer the case. Ilos has been devastated by means unknown, its entire surface changed to the color of rust. The atmosphere shows heightened levels of oxygen. Wildfires, presumably ignited by lightning strikes, can be seen burning on the dark side. This indicates that most, if not all, respirating animal life forms have died off. Surface gravity is a comfortable 1.17 standard G's. Let's head down. Okay, weird that we're being shown a us taking the Moo Relay when we were over Ilos. Oh hey, Geth ships galore! Wonder if they were waiting for us. Wonder if they'll find us with our uh, stealth Commander, systems. We've got company. Have their sensors picked us up yet? Well, stealth systems are engaged. Unless we get close enough for a visual, they won't have any idea we're here. Picking up some strange readings from the planet's surface. Dig us down, Joker. Lock in on the coordinates. Negative on that, Commander. The nearest landing zone's two clicks away. We'll never make it in time on foot. Get us something closer. There is nowhere closer. <laughs> I looked. Drop us in the middle. Presley. You need at least 100 meters of open terrain to pull off a drop like that. The most I can find near Saren is 20. 20 meters? We'll never get in close enough for a drop. Drop we anyway. Have to try. Find another landing zone. There is no other landing zone. <laughs> I love Presley. It's too steep. It's our only option. It's not an option. It's a suicide run. We don't. I can do it. I trust in Joker. Joker? I can do it. He's the best pilot. Gear up and head down to the Mako. Joker, drop us right on top of that bastard. I believe in Joker. 
He may not have legs to stand on, but his skills, he can stand on those. Come on, primary team. Garrus, Tally. We're heading down to a dead Prothean world. We're gonna beat up that bastard. It's not suicide. It's a calculated risk. And I calculate Joker is good enough. More than enough. You two, keep moving inside. Ah. Hello, bitches. Mako drop incoming. We're gonna lose the Mako. Oh, I thought we were gonna like ram the Mako in there. But I guess not. We have to get inside this bunker before Saren finds the conduit. There's no way we're getting past that door with brute force. Saren found a way to open. There must be some kind of security override somewhere in this complex. We'll have to find some way to get it up and running again. We're stuck on the outside. Time to save. We're here on the final world, presumably. Looks like... Get out. Get out of here, get. I'm not afraid of you. I'm gonna have to keep my eye out. Who got in front of me to stop my shoots? I felt like something, maybe it was foliage. Prothean corpse. Ah, this is where we are. That's the archive door. I hate when that happens. Why does that happen? Why does that take me to the journal? I don't want to go to the journal! There's an elevator. I'm not over anything! I hate when that happens. It's just, I'm, just, I, I'm trying to drag game. Please! I'm just trying to go through through. Okay, those aren't active for some reason. Even though they're looking active. Let's go all over this place. Make sure that there's nothing that we're missing. Oh, yeah. I thought it was like, are we going down? Technically, no. Ah, so it was a way down. Ish. Shut up. So these are Protheans. Or at least the remains of them, or maybe statues. They seem a bit... Formal? My brain wants to say. The one downside is they look very humanoid. Now we're gonna get anything of much use. But they're tens. Gotta hand it to these geth bastards. Ooh, armature control. I got the Omni Gel for it. Armatures are now down. I thought it might have been one of those creeper bastards, but no. It was a flying drone. So we don't have to worry about armatures. At least for now. We're still getting tons of money for our kills. Once again. Across the plaza. I'm gonna want to head back just to make sure that we're not 
missing anything. Like that elevator. Wonder if there'll be a choice, like, on the elevators. elevator seems turned off. Nines? We don't need nines. So yeah, we can't access this. So we move on. Into the courtyard. Actually, I'm going to want to make sure I go there. That looks like a place where things might be. And things are important. Again, are these statues or actual dead Protheans? Either way, they're creepy. Thank God for maps. Actually, I'm gonna go this way, because it seems like it's a side area. Well, it is a side area. Got rid of the destroyer before it could cause any trouble. Like, run at me. Just want to make sure I don't miss any other kind of geth diddly do terminals that I can use against them. mean if the jammers actually stopped you from using your actual map. We don't really need pistols right now. Granted, I don't think we need much of new things anyway. elevator, but it's... We'll find the last jammer. It's not a major elevator, it's just to get up there. I'm an idiot. Because I was like, how do I get up there? This elevator isn't anything important, it just takes me up this little level. For no real purpose, it seems. Like this one data cache. Well, data cache, secure crate, whichever. Fall down. Game won't let me fall down. At that point, why not just give stare? That's my way of doing it. Why have an elevator when you can just give the players some stairs to go up? Elevators should be something major, not something frivolous. Since we already saved. Let's just hope we can stop Saren in time. This place still has power. It must be running off its own generator. I bet this is the command center for the entire complex. Saren's troops must have sealed the doors from here after he went inside. We'll have to figure out how to disengage the security lockdown if we ever want to get inside the bunker. And we have to.
not getting into that bunker is not an option. How much health do you have, my dude? Death Prime. Alright. Fight for me, my armature children. I have the Omni Gel for all of this. Let's take a look at the map. So the security room is ahead. And then the elevator back to where we came from. That was the locked one. Doesn't look like there's anything specific. We have fighting armatures on foot. Does not sound nice. We have to go up and around, most likely. Security room is important. Let me in. Come on. Seren's already got a head start. We have to go find him before he reaches the conduit. Unless he's already found him, then we're just walking into a trap. That's a chance we'll have to take. Hold on. Something's happening. A Prophean? Too late. Unable to... Invading fleets. No escape. Sounds like some kind of message, but I don't recognize the language. It's English. It's probably in Prophean. Oh, I'm Commander Shepard, so I can understand 50, it. 50,000 years old. No wonder we can't understand it. I understand it. The message is all broken up, but I recognize some of the words. It's a warning against the Reaper invasion. Incredible! The cipher must have transferred an understanding of the Prothean language into your mind. Not safe. Seek refuge inside the archives. Inside the archives. What's it saying? Can you make out anything useful? Something about refuge inside oh, archives? The Citadel. Overwhelmed. Only hope. Act of desperation. The conduit. All is lost. I'm only getting small bits. It said something about the conduit, but it's too degraded to help. We should go. Cannot be stopped. Cannot be stopped. Of course, the only full sentences to get through are that. Well, I wonder if the game put that destination marker down for me. I've noticed that happen a few times, where suddenly a destination marker is on the map. And then when I try to get rid of it, it's like, oh, go to journal, and I hate that. We're coming for you, Saren. You're gonna rue the day you betrayed everyone. I wonder how things would have been different if the Reaper that was showing us the ropes survived. Like, if he didn't go on ahead and alone. The answer is no, that one just stick, stuck around. Maybe we'll be able to drive the Mako in there. I've only died, I have I died twice with the Mako? Both the Thresher Moss. I don't want to run into any of the diddly damn colossi on foot. I thought Sarah would have set some kind of trap or ambush. There must have been a too much of a Or we just haven't run into it yet. Either or. Personally, I would have 
gone on ahead to try and get to the conduit. That's the most important thing. Why lay an ambush that could fail when you can get to the conduit and try to win? It's just a long. But there is a little side room. What are those take... things on the wall? Some kind of container? They look like stasis pods. The Protheans probably tried to keep themselves alive through cryogenic freezing. The Reapers wouldn't let that go. The Reapers probably wouldn't be fooled by cryogenic freezing. If that was the trap, Sarah and I am disappointed. force field. But I also know that there's a room to the side here. A room that we have to go through anyway. What's happening? Force it's field. Trap. Saren must have set an ambush. I don't think Saren's behind this. This is either Prothean. What if the conduit is like the thing holding the Reapers back? Like the Reapers come to destroy the Protheans. If this were simply an automated trap, but then the Protheans trapped, trapped all the Reapers. What do you think this is? Whatever Maybe that's what the sense. cannot be stopped was. <laughs> hopeful, hopeful thinking. Probably not. Vigil. You are not Prothean, but you are not machine either. This eventuality was one of many that was anticipated. This is why we sent our warning through the beacons. Looks like some kind of VI program. Pretty badly damaged. I could hear it though. I do not sense the taint of indoctrination upon any of you. Unlike the other that passed recently, perhaps there is still hope. Did you throw out the force field blurs here? How come I can understand you? Why aren't you speaking the Prothean language? I have been monitoring your communication since ah. you arrived at this facility. I have translated my output into a format you will comprehend. That's not really how translation works, but my go name off. is Vigil. You are safe here for the moment, but that is likely to change. Soon, nowhere will be safe. Hmm. What are you? Are you some kind of artificial intelligence program? I am an advanced non-organic analysis system with personality imprints from Kesad Aishan, chief overseer of the Ilos research facility. Hmm. And what do you want? Why did you bring me here? You must break a cycle that has continued for millions of years. But to stop it, you must understand, or you will make the same mistakes we did. The Citadel is the heart of your civilization and the seat of government, as it was with us, and as it has been keepers. with every civilization that came before us. But the Citadel is a trap. The station is actually an enormous mass relay, one that links to dark space. The empty void beyond the galaxy's horizon. Of course it is. I knew when I had the bad Citadel feelings of that once I learned activated. that it was a Reaper. The Reapers Citadel. will all through, and all you know will be destroyed. Citadel as a relay. How come nobody ever noticed the Citadel was an inactive mass relay? The Reapers are careful to keep the greatest secrets of the Citadel hidden. That is why they created a species of seemingly benign organic caretakers. The Keepers maintain the station's most yep. basic functions. They enable any species that discovers the Citadel to use it without fully understanding the I would not have gone along with that. Reliance I would on the not Keepers trust no a other giant... Species will ever discover the I'll talk after. True nature. Not until the relay is activated and the Reapers invade. Yeah, but it's like, who in their right mind would trust an ancient giant like space station that was left by a species apparently thousands of years thousands upon thousands of years ago that are all just gone it's just like you wouldn't do that you'd want to understand it especially if it's like oh yeah these are benign uh, organic creatures the keepers they keep it running but we don't understand this place it's like why are you stupid they're all stupid it's <laughs> how do the reapers survive out in dark space we have only theories. The researchers here came to believe the Reapers enter prolonged states of inactivity to conserve energy. 
This allows them to survive the thousands and thousands of years it takes for organic civilization to rebuild itself. But in this state, they are vulnerable. We need to annihilate them. By retreating beyond the edges of the galaxy, they ensure no one will accidentally discover them. They keep their existence hidden until the Citadel Relay is activated. Hmm. Saren's going to activate it. If he turns on the Relay, the Reapers can wipe out the Council and the Citadel fleet in one fell swoop. That was our fate. Our leaders were dead before we even realized we were under attack. The Reapers seized control of the Citadel, and through it, the mass relays. Communication and transportation across our Empire were crippled. Each star system was isolated, cut off from the others. Easy prey for the Reaper fleets. Over the next decades, the Reapers systematically obliterated our people. Took decades, world by huh? world, well, system by system, they methodically wiped us out. All of you. Some of you must have managed to survive. Through the Citadel, the Reapers had access to all our records, maps, census yeah. data. Information is power, and they knew everything about us. Their fleets advanced across every settled region of the galaxy. Some worlds were utterly destroyed. Others were conquered, their populations enslaved. These indoctrinated servants became sleeper agents under Reaper control. Taken in as refugees by other Protheans, they betrayed them to the machines. Aye, aye, aye. Within a few centuries, the Reapers had killed or enslaved every Prothean in the galaxy. They were relentless, brutal, and absolutely thorough. Why do they do this? What do the Reapers get out of this? Why do they keep repeating this pattern of genocide over and over? Kicks? The Reapers are alien, unknowable. Perhaps they need slaves or resources. More likely they are driven by motives and goals organic beings cannot hope to comprehend. In the end, what does it matter? Your survival depends on stopping them, not in understanding them. And if you understand them, you can better stop them. I don't understand. Where did the Reapers go after they conquered your people? Our worlds were stripped bare, harvested by the indoctrinated slaves. Everything of value, all resources, all technology was taken. Certain that all advanced organic life had been extinguished, the Reapers retreated back through the Citadel Relay into dark space, sealing it behind them. I wonder if Sovereign stayed all behind the All evidence of the Reaper it. invasion had been wiped away. Only their indoctrinated slaves were left behind, abandoned. Mindless husks, no longer capable of independent thought, the indoctrinated soon starved or died of exposure. The genocide of the Protheans was complete. And how can we stop them? You said you brought me here for a reason. Tell me what I need to do. The conduit is the key. Before the Reapers attack, we Protheans were on the cusp of unlocking the mysteries behind mass relay technology. Ilos was a top secret facility. Here, researchers worked to create a small scale version of a mass relay. One that linked directly to the Citadel, the hub of the relay network. Conduit's not a weapon. It's a backdoor onto the Citadel. They didn't find How did you? you manage to stay hidden. All official records of our project were destroyed in the initial attack on the Citadel. While the Prothean Empire came crashing down, Ilos was spared. We severed all communication with the outside, and our facility went dark. The personnel retreated underground into these archives. To conserve resources, everyone was put into cryogenic stasis. I was programmed to monitor the facility and wake the staff when the danger had passed. But the what? genocide of an entire species is a long, slow process. Years passed, decades, and they all died in cryo. The Reapers persisted, and my energy reserves were dwindling. What did you do? How did you survive? I began to disable the life support of non-essential personnel. First support staff, then security. One by one, their pods were shut down to conserve energy. Eventually, only the stasis pods of the top scientists remained active. Even these were in danger of failing when the Reapers finally retreated back through the Citadel relay. There were hundreds of stasis pods out there. You just shut them down? You killed them? 
Considering in the face, I'll just say you betrayed you them. Program to protect them, not kill them. This outcome was not completely unforeseen. My actions were a result of contingency programming entered on my creation. I bet they didn't tell the non-essential staff about this contingency. I saved key personnel. When the Reapers retreated, the top researchers were still alive. My actions are the only reason any hope remains. When the researchers woke, they realized the Prothean species was doomed. There were only a dozen individuals left. Far too few to sustain a viable population. Yet they vowed to find some way to stop the Reapers from returning. A way to break the cycle forever. And they knew the Keepers were the key. Are you gonna hijack the Keepers? And like, launch the Reapers into a sun? The, influence of the, Reapers? the Keepers are controlled by the Citadel. Before each invasion, a signal is sent through the station compelling the Keepers to activate the Citadel Relay. After decades of feverish study, the scientists discovered a way to alter this signal. Using the conduit, they gained access to the Citadel and made the modifications. This time, when Sovereign sent the signal to the Citadel, the Keepers ignored it. The Reapers are trapped in dark space. Unless Saren succeeds. Saren can use the conduit to bypass all the Citadel's external defenses. Correct. And once inside, he can transfer control of the station to Sovereign. Sovereign will override the Citadel systems and manually open the relay. And the cycle of extinction will begin again. Hmm. Can you help me? Is there any way we can stop them? Why are There's we inside a data the file in my flashing console. abomination? Take a copy when you go. When you reach the Citadel's master control unit, upload it to the station. It will corrupt the Citadel's security protocols and give you temporary control of the station. It might give you a chance against Sovereign. Wait, where's the Citadel's master control unit? Hidden by the like keepers? Through the conduit. Follow Saren. He will lead you to your destination. Sovereign. If the Reapers are trapped in dark space, how did Sovereign get here? It is logical to assume the Reapers would leave one of their own behind after each extinction. A sentinel to pave the way for their inevitable return. Like those in dark space, Sovereign probably spent most of the last 50,000 years in a state of hibernation. Periodically, it would wake to analyze the situation. Keeping its existence hidden, it would evaluate the state of galactic civilization. And when the time was right, it would signal the Citadel and usher in the next Reaper invasion. But this time the signal failed. The Keepers did not respond. Sovereign's allies were trapped in the void. Alone, it was forced to try and discover what had gone wrong. They could just attack. Sovereign's the largest ship in the galaxy. Why all this secrecy? Why not just attack the Citadel? Sovereign is not invincible. Revealing its true nature would have united the forces of every organic species against it. Even a Reaper couldn't survive such odds. But the Reapers are patient. They will not rush into the unknown. Sovereign could have been planning this for centuries, moving deliberately, gathering allies. Slowly, it has assembled the pieces of the puzzle, working through agents to keep itself hidden. Saren is the most visible pawn of the Reapers, but I doubt he was the first. There's probably a pawn now, on the Council itself. Bond. Whether from confidence or desperation, I cannot say. But it is determined to reopen the portal to dark space. The beacons themselves. What about the beacon on Eden Prime? And the one on Vermeer? What were they for? At our apex, the beacons spanned the breadth of our empire. We used them as a single galaxy-wide network to transmit data and communications rapidly from world to world. Virtually all the beacons were destroyed during the invasion, but once the Reapers were gone, the survivors here on Ilos decided to risk sending out a message. We knew it was unlikely there were other survivors, but if there were, we wanted them to know about Ilos. We wanted to give them hope, so a message was sent across the network. And I think so far, that's only led to Saren getting here. You could have exposed yourself to the Reapers. In truth, we didn't expect any of the beacons would still function, but we had to try. If there were survivors, 
We had to reach them. The message was meant for our own people. It was coded so only organic beings could interpret it. And we that's still why didn't he understand needs... the power of Reaper yeah. indoctrination. We never realized it could lead an agent of the machines, like Saren, to this world. But it has also led you here. Uh, so perhaps we did not fail it was a after biological all. only thing. So when the Reapers created the Citadel, they created the Keepers as well? A more likely scenario is that the Keepers were one of the early harvested civilizations. Perhaps the very first. Perhaps they responded well to indoctrination, or the Reapers simply bred them to be obedient. In any case, they were left behind to operate and maintain the Citadel. But the Keepers are no longer directly controlled by Sovereign or its ilk. They evolved so that they only respond to well, the signals some... emitted by the Citadel itself. Silver lining there. When the Protheans altered the Citadel signals, they broke Sovereign's hold over the Keepers. Now, they are completely harmless. That explains the gaff. Sovereign must have realized that organic races were difficult to control. A likely hypothesis. The Keepers evolved in an unanticipated direction. Non-organic servants like the Geth would be more predictable. Let me guess, what happened to the Prothean scientists? What happened to the survivors from the Conduit Project? They used the Conduit to gain access to the Citadel. But the Conduit is only a prototype. The portal only links in one direction, so they were trapped on the station. I do not know what became of them then. It is unlikely they found any food or water on the station. I fear they suffered a slow, grim death. Harsh. I only know they succeeded in their mission to seal the relay. Your presence here proves their sacrifice was not in vain. Well, let's move. Saren's got enough of a head start. Grab that data file and let's go. The one you call Saren has not reached the conduit. Not yet. There is still hope if you hurry. Apparently I got Paragon for that. Wonder why. Well, at least my fears of the Citadel were Tragic. For all their vindicated. The Protheans lost everything, just like my people. Even their last plan failed. Not yet. The did not fail. They gave up. It falls to us to make the most of it. So I suggest we hurry. Gonna save after that long conversation. So we need to go to the conduit, which will teleport us back to the citadel and give us access to like a keeper only place. On the citadel. There's an aqueduct, so it's just we have to make our way. Wonder why it's labeled as a point of interest. That makes me worry. That makes me think, like, oh, this is a, 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 like a, a thing. Why is it a thing? Why is the Mako so terrible to control? Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's anything. So why is it marked? I don't get it. We're gonna mark a part of the map as a point of interest because we think the map makers, we think that it's interesting. I disagree. Me, person playing game. Oh, they hit a wall. Why did you hit a wall, you idiot? You are a dumb colossus.
This place reminds me of, like, Metroid Prime. Just for some reason. Some of the architecture a little bit. went to say, get down, Mr. President, the rocket. Get repulsored, Billy. Is that a force field or a backwards waterfall? Ah, there, fuck. The conduit. Why are it's we stopping? Incredible. We don't have time to admire the view. We have to get through that relay, and these Geth aren't going to make it easy on us. Man, I wonder what the Geth are doing. What the Geth do? They're invading the Citadel. And, of course, the Citadel wasn't prepared. Wow, it's a mistake they should have listened to the protagonist. They're going down rather quickly. Activate the defenses, seal the station. The arms aren't moving. Systems not responding. Abandon the Citadel. Evacuate the Council. Citadel Control. Citadel Control, do you copy? They're already on board. Hang on. Things are gonna get a little rough. We don't have time to kill them. We need to get through. Launching the goddamn Mako. I love that. The goddamn Mako gets sent. failures detected across all monitored systems. Please begin emergency evacuation. Hello, motherfuckers. Mako time! Yeah! Ah, oh, come on, we've looked at worse than that, but it, it is on fire now. I guess if we did send it through a mass relay. So I guess it makes sense. across the entire level. All non-emergency personnel must evacuate immediately. Status report. Give me a rundown of the damage. We have lost all primary power to the level. Environmental controls are not responding. Class 3 fires are burning in sectors 2, 3, 6, and 7. Civilian casualties are high. And we saw a body fall in the background. I am also detecting numerous unauthorized synthetic life forms throughout the station. They are believed to be hostile. Please approach with caution. The Council. What happened to the Council? In accordance with standard emergency procedures, the Council has been evacuated to the Destiny Ascension. Other survivors. What about Captain Anderson and Ambassador Udina? What happened to them? I have no information on the status of specific individuals. Once the current crisis has been resolved... Sarah. Sarah. Former Spectre agent Saren Arturius is nearing the vicinity of the Council Chamber. A warrant has been issued for his arrest, though Citadel Security is unable to respond at this time. Log off, Avina. 
Come on. We need to stop Saren before it's too late. Please begin emergency evacuation procedures. This is not a drill. Like, gee, who would have thought? I would. Aye, aye, aye. Well, let's see where things go. He's shooting the keepers! <laughs> He's so pissed off. He's the starting. closing. They're sealing the station. No, not really. Don't let the enemy ships inside the arms. I just think it's getting ready for mass relay. Normandy coming through, probably. No, it's a giant fucking ship. That's suiciding. I, I saw something in the distance. Like, what was that small ship, the Normandy, coming on through? No, it's more Geth ships suiciding. And one made it through. Not just any. It's probably frickin' Sovereign from the Red Lightning that's coming off it. This is bad. Since he is a Reaper, and this is a Reaper Citadel, things are only going to get worse. They don't want us Parents getting there. the elevator. Suit up. We're going outside. Oh, boy. Oh, that's a cool effect. Zero G time. Gonna have to fight frickin' Sovereign on foot. Ah. For a moment there, it looked like the edge. Hitters back to back. A warlord. Freaking board sovereign. 
Or are we gonna head to like the council chambers? There was a whole side area we could have gone. But it's probably full of enemies. So let's go. But hey, at least those geth turrets aren't gonna be a problem. themselves to super health. Emergency access to the council room. We're gonna save. Saren! I wonder how... How many council people might get out of here? Here it comes.
We're here, Saren. Stop what you're doing. Did he jump off? Yep. He's hiding from us. Of course he brought his hoverboard. I was afraid you wouldn't make it in time, Shepard. In time? In time for what? The final confrontation. I think we both expected it would end like this. You've lost. You know that. In a few minutes, Sovereign will have full control of all the Citadel systems. The relay will open. The Reapers will return. I can stop I've them. still got a few tricks up my sleeve. You survived our encounter on Vermeer, but I've changed since then. Improved. Sovereign has upgraded me. You mean become his slave even Sovereign more? Sovereign implant you? Are you insane? I suppose I should thank you, Shepard. After Vermeer, I couldn't stop thinking about what you said. About Sovereign manipulating me. About indoctrination. The doubts began to eat away at me. Sovereign sensed my hesitation. I was implanted to strengthen my resolve. To become now more indoctrinated. I believe in Sovereign completely. I understand that the Reapers need organics. Join us, and Sovereign will find a place for you, too. You're indoctrinated. Sovereign's controlling you through your implants. Don't you see that? The relationship is symbiotic. Organic and machine intertwined. A union of flesh and steel. The strengths of both, the weaknesses of neither. I am a vision of the future, Shepard. The evolution of all organic life. This is our destiny. Join Sovereign and experience a true rebirth. We can beat them. Sovereign hasn't won yet. I can stop it from taking control of the station. Step aside and the invasion will never happen. We can't stop it. Not forever. You saw the visions. You saw what happened to the Protheans. The Reapers are too powerful. Don't give in. Some part of you must still realize this is wrong. You can fight this. Maybe you're right. Maybe there is still a chance for... For... <laughs> Sovereign is too strong. I'm sorry. It is too late for me. That's not true. Your power of will got you here. It's not over yet. You can still redeem yourself. Goodbye, Shepard. Thank you. Talk the monster to death indeed. Thought that killing someone would give you so much Paragon. Vigil's data file worked. I've got control of all systems. Quick, open the station's arms. Maybe the fleet can take Sovereign down. See if you can open a communications channel. The Destiny Ascension. Main drives offline. Kinetic barriers down 40%. The Council is on board. I repeat, the Council is on board. Normandy to the Citadel. Normandy to the Citadel. Please tell me that's you, Commander. It's me. I'm here, Joker. We caught that distress call, Commander. I'm sitting here in the Andura sector with the entire Arcturus fleet. We can save the Ascension. Just unlock the relays around the Citadel and we'll send the cavalry in. Are you sure about this, Shepard? Human casualties will be very high if you send your fleet in now. This is bigger than humanity. Sovereign's a threat to every organic species yeah. in the galaxy. This is a... True. Keystone. That's why you can't waste reinforcements trying to save the Council. You must hold them back until the Citadel arms open up and the human fleet can go after Sovereign. What's the order, Commander? Come in now to save the Ascension or hold back? Save the Council. Opening the relays now, Joker. We need to save the Ascension, no matter what the cost. I hope the Council appreciates this. Alliance ships, move in. Save the Destiny Ascension. Without the Council, a lot of sh things go to shit. Commander, we're picking up reinforcements. 
It's the Alliance. Thank the goddess. Besides, a lot of Gath are coming for the... This is bigger than just in one thing. We gotta save as many as we can. The Alliance. Fighting alongside everyone else. Destiny Ascension, you are all clear. Repeat, you are all clear. The Citadel's opening. All ships move in. Concentrate on Sovereign. Blast that Reaper to hell. Make sure he's dead. <laughs> It is, it is what he would have wanted. We can't risk Sovereign puppeting his corpse. Okay, good. Hopefully that's that. He's dead. Sovereign coming in for a chat. Alright, that's horrifying. Are we gonna get our boss fight anyway? Garrus! He blew up the goddamn body. Okay, not really blew it up. Transforming. What the hell? Alright, that's utterly horrifying. down no matter what the cost. Of course. 
Jesus. Did he put everything he had into piloting Saren? I feel like that was it. The shields are down. Now's our chance. Get it with everything we got. Destroy the Reaper, bastard. You go, Joker. Hard on my flank. We're going in. What are you gonna do? Animate this ship? I thought he was gonna ram right through. But that is just as beautiful. small piece that is still very, very big. Take that, Geth. Your commander is gone. Your god is gone. And you only revealed the truth everyone else. Is it the fan? Oh no, I thought it might have been our super fan Captain coming to save the day, but no, it's just right Citadel here. Security. For a moment, he, he had the same hair. Admiral! Captain, oh no, not Admiral. Now. Captain Addison. Where's the commander? Ambassador, Captain, Commander Shepard. We have gathered here to recognize the enormous contributions of the Alliance forces in the war against Sovereign and the Geth. Many humans lost their lives in the battle to save the Citadel. Brave and courageous soldiers who willingly gave their lives so that we, the Council, might live. There is no greater sacrifice. And we share your grief over the tragic loss of so many noble men and women. The Council also owes you a great personal debt, Commander, one we can never repay. You saved Damn right not just there. our lives, but the lives of billions from Sovereign and the Reapers. Commander Shepard, your heroic and selfless actions serve as a symbol of everything humanity and the Alliance stand for. And though we cannot bring back those valiant soldiers who gave their lives to save ours, we can honor their memories through our actions. Humanity has shown it is ready to stand as a defender and protector of the galaxy. You have proved you are worthy to join our ranks and serve beside us on the Citadel Council. Counselor, on behalf of Humanity and the Alliance, we thank you for this prestigious honor and humbly accept. We will need a list of potential candidates to fill Humanity's seat on the Council. I say Captain Given all Anderson. Has happened, I am sure your recommendation will carry a great deal of weight, Commander. Do you support any particular candidate? Captain Anderson. We need someone with the courage to stand up for what he believes in. Someone like Captain Anderson. Him? <laughs> you must be joking. Anderson prefers to let his fists do the talking. And he Only saved with the day. You, Ambassador. <laughs> Only with you. Are you sure about this, Commander? The Captain's a soldier, not a politician. Hmm. That's the point. We've already got too many politicians on the Citadel. The Captain would be perfect for this job. 
I think it's an inspired choice. The council would welcome him with open arms should he accept. Captain it. I'm <laughs> Captain honest. Anderson has done a As lot for me. I'll do everything in my power to help he, the council. He feels like the it. right choice. Sovereign's defeat marks the beginning of a new era for both humanity and the council. Hmm. This isn't over yet. Sovereign was only a vanguard. The Reaper fleet is still coming. Hundreds of ships, maybe thousands. And I'm gonna find some way to stop them. If only one Reaper could do all Shepard's that. Right. Humanity is ready to we do We need its to part. be ready. United with the rest of the Council, we have the strength to overcome any challenge. When the Reapers come, we must stand side by side. We must fight against them as one. And together, we will drive them back into dark space. This was great. This was loads of fun. I might even start up Mass Effect 2 and like do a like an hour or two of the intro, maybe, because this was great fun. I wonder what the epilogue is going to be like, if there is an epilogue. Or if they're going to let Mass Effect 2 be that epilogue, to a degree. I, I like that. The planet is turning, but like the atmosphere is still kind of there. But alrighty then. That was Mass Effect 1. And I would say, overall, it's a pretty damn good game. Though I do think that since this is the Legendary Edition, that things were not as polished as they should have been. And I mean, le and I'm not even talking about, oh, they could have fixed things like, well, technically they did. I was going to say, oh, they maybe they didn't want to mess with the experience. But then they went and made the legendary mode level up system, which made you basically level up faster to a degree. Where you got, like, instead of having 60 levels, you had uh, 30 levels. Also, I wonder if this is copyrighted music. Who knows? But. Yeah, I ran into a few, like, issues that I feel are a little inexcusable, considering this is a 2007 game roughly remastered not that long ago. Granted, they also were remastering two other large RPGs at the same time, but the fact that I ran into multiple audio glitches, like, that I have dubbed the Eden Prime audio glitch, because that's where I first ran into it, the fact that I once ran into, because uh, I decided to play around the uh, peak 15 level because I wanted to know why there were enemy signatures after I blew up the Rachni. And uh, I won't spoil anything there for other people that want to do things differently than me. But safe to say, uh, I ran into an enemy that had uh, previously died. Their body was on the ground from a, like a cutscene thing. And the body was shooting at me. And I couldn't shoot it, but I could blow it up with a grenade. I also find that to be inexcusable. And let's do a lot of things. But as it comes to the... Oh, and I guess there's also were a few graphical glitches, like every now and then weird textures would flash in the sky. Every now and then they were like split second, but they were still noticeable to me. And it's just like, come on, this is a remaster. Like, I might expect that in, like, an original launch, but this is a remaster. Come on. Especially considering it seems like all the remaster did was add a different leveling option and up-res the resolution for modern monitors. Other than that, it doesn't... Like, so far, as far as I know, as somebody who hasn't played the original Mass Effect... Like, didn't play them at launch, didn't play them in their original release forms. It doesn't feel like they changed all that much. It feels very bare bones, the remaster. Then, all that's left is to judge it as its own game, as its own original game. And I say it is pretty damn good. 
I prefer it to, to like, uh, Star Wars The Knights of the Old Republic because that was kind of turn-based, but not really. It, the way it functions is a little bit weird. But, as it goes for, like, uh, the, the base combat is pretty decent. I feel like it is kind of wonky to a degree because they expect you to, like, freeze time and select abilities, but then you can also put them in a hot bar. But they also kind of don't describe what the powers do that well sometimes, like immunity. I used immunity once throughout all that. And, uh, I still have my rights with the, uh, Paragon and, like, Paragon, Renegade, Charm, Intimidate system, because you can level up Charm to, like, level 6 off the bat, but then you need to go progress the story to get to level 9, and then to get to level 10, 11, and 12, you need to level up Paragon. But... The only way to get levels 11 and 12 is to get, like, 75% Paragon points, which feels nearly impossible to do without missing some Paragon choices, which kind of annoys me. <laughs> I hope they revamp the Paragon system, or at least the Charm system. Like... I feel like there's a reason why... Charm and, like, uh, oh, you're a good moral person options are separate in other games, because that way charm can be, like, a general conversation thing, and then, like, a paragon option, in, in this case, would be a special option that you really work for. And it really does feel like certain paragon options are a bit harder to get because... A lot of side quests are bundled together, and it seems like the only way to get Paragon points sometimes is to miss Paragon choices. But at the same time, if you have enough Paragon charm points to do a Paragon uh, choice, then you get even more Paragon points, so it's, it's just very weird. And then I guess the Mako sections, I'm 50-50 on. They're interesting and kind of a breather overall, but god damn it, I hate the mountains sometimes. Sheer cliffs way too often, little cauldrons where you go over one side, then you fall into a steep bowl, and there's only like one way out, and they usually put a frickin' surveyable in the cauldron, which is annoying to me very annoying to me. It, I really feel like everything on a planet should be shown to you, or at the very least, like on the map, it should be shown on the map from the get-go, or at the very least, there should be a, like, oh, there's a beacon tower. If we go there, we'll be able to know more about the planet, or something like that, just so I can do as many surveyables I want, get all of the hidden corpses and things. The collectibles felt a bit weird and didn't feel like they did anything. It just felt like a thing to do, as opposed to something that gave you a lot. Maybe it's because you did them in, uh... Maybe it's because they were, like, so basic. Oh, you get money and experience, but they're not even special because they, like, scale depending on your level. So at the end of the day, it's the same. And then I guess, to end it, end it, let's talk about the story. I love the story. I love the world, the universe of Mass Effect. The aliens are interestingly designed. I think some of the ideas of, like, uh, well, we only really went into how the Asari worked a little bit. But overall, it was a grand fun time. The universe was interesting, uh, and they and I like that the world building was part of the plot. Like, oh, the Mass Effect relays in the Citadel—they came from the ancient Prothean species that's long gone. 
but then it kind of unravels into everything else. Like, we actually go into why the Protheans died and what else is going on. And uh, really, the only thing that's kind of weird is the Geth feel underplayed. They were a big thing at the start. The Geth came out of the veil after 200 years. And that was basically it. Even though we had a Quarian on the, the Normandy tally, there wasn't really much in... <laughs> there really wasn't much about the Geth. They were just, uh, yeah, they were a slave robot race once, but then they grew too intelligent and self-aware... And then they declared independence and now have come back for revenge at the behest of their giant robot god, the Reapers. But overall, I like the conversations a lot, even if it does kind of boil down to... Even though it does seem to boil down to most of the time in basic conversation to just be, do you want the nice option or the dick option to accrue more renegade or more uh, paragon points? And then how mi <laughs> do and then basically select the paragon option when available. Oh God, I just realized something. What if they realize that by the time of Mass Effect Two or Three, like? Oh, people only really selected the Paragon or Renegade options when they were available depending on what run they were doing. Let's throw a Renegade or Paragon option that fucks with you if you take it. I could see them doing that in the future and I would hate that. That's the kind of thing that I would save scum. But overall, I think like the crew, the crew was a lot of fun. I like the crew. I like Ga Garrus, Caden, Ashley, Rex, Tally... Really, the only one that I didn't really do a lot with was Dr. Tassoni. Let me guess, would you like um, uh, to divvy dop? But I'll, while I give my thoughts, I'm going to look up... Uh, is it even possible to get max level on a single run-through? It doesn't feel like it is. But, yeah, Conversations was fun. The story, I think, was really cool. Even if, like, uh, some of it is, like, mm. the council is a bit silly. Like, also, the ambassador. The ambassador is kind of silly. The ambassador is just like, you're going to choose him? You didn't do anything for me, ambassador. In fact, a lot of it seemed, a lot of what he said to me felt more like ladder climbing than anything. You destroyed a Prothean temple. That is very bad, Shepard, but I completed the mission. That's not good enough, blah, blah, blah. I just hope that Captain Anderson becoming, uh, the council member doesn't screw with me. Also, I'm happy that sending him after the ambassador's computer worked out best for everything. Because I was worried about my boy. I was worried about a lot of things. And the only thing that seemed to be was... Uh, the only thing that seemed to be unavoidable in Devastation was... Uh, Ashley dying. But that's only because I chose that. Thank God I sent Caden with the general. Because even though... Because, like, uh, I would have wanted to choose Caden overall because I liked his personality and story more. It's just, I liked it. It was a good experience.
but overall it's pretty interesting pretty pretty interesting and especially because it felt like well so far it feels like the overall like decision to make a game that was specifically meant to carry over across games like ah mass effect 1 and then all your choices they carry over into mass effect 2 and then those choices carry over to mass effect 3 is like it leads to a lot of possibility but i can already see the the strings as it were as far as i can tell more than likely things are going to be a bit bad because I could see the choices carrying over to Mass Effect 2 blossoming out into many potential things, but then they're going to have to start calling a lot of like choices and railroad the player a bit when it comes to Mass Effect 3. Because when it comes to the first one, oh, all your choices, they occur more naturally because it's the first one. But then when it comes to Mass Effect 2, all those choices bloom out and they're probably in the honeymoon period. So they're like, oh, all your choices, they can go so many different directions. But then when it comes to actually having to rally them all together into a satisfying ending, I think that's where the game's going to fall apart. That is where I fear things are going to get a little bit more muddy. So this is going to be interesting, though. Very interesting. Very, very interesting indeed. But overall, yeah. I'll go ahead and wrap up the recording, because I think I'm going to do a little bit of Mass Effect 2 while I'm here. So, for the archival purposes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. I'm going to continue to Mass Effect 2 right now live, but for recording purposes, I, this will be it for now. And for recording purposes, if you want more from me, I have a, two YouTube channels, Neon Icy Mings and Neon Icy Games, one for edited content and one for putting all these stream archives to a good place. And then if you're one of those people already watching these archives, you can watch me play these games live at twitch.tv slash Neon Icy Wings. And I'm just super excited. I'm going to move on. Thank you very much for watching. For those watching the archive, Hope to catch you next time, and for those watching right now, watching live in just a little bit, and we're going to move on to Mass Effect 2. <laughs>